and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 286. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? It's fine. It's been, an, looks like a, quite a slow week after the movie came out. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those weeks where after something big happens, things kind of fizzle out, which is normal, which is normal. But still, uh, we have some of the episodes, like I think what, today is episode 24? Four. Yes, 24. Uncommon Bond. Mm-hmm. 24, and next week is going to be the season ender. Oh, hiatus, hiatus. But still, um, before we go, before we delve deep into the show, um, what have you been doing, man? Like, how was your week? My week has been quite slow. It's been nothing, uh, nothing happening much. It just been reading on stuff. But we can talk more about that on the end of the end of the show. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So, anywho, have you seen the movie? Yeah, we. I do see the movie, and it's great. I I could say uh, I give it an eight point five out of ten. And the thing is that it's a bit kind of rush the story, but overall, it's still such a great watch. After all, after all. <laughs> well, like I mentioned before, it's a My Little Pony story. If there's no rush um, storytelling, it's not a My Little Pony movie or story. <laughs> Yep. I'm so used to it by now. It's even in the comics. So it's like, huh. Uh, but talking about the movies, um, our first news for today is Tale of Equestria, the official movie source book. So what this book is, well, in all technicality, it's made by the people who made the... Tales of Equestria. Yep. The tabletop storytelling game or RPG, if you want to call it. Um, the Tales of Equestria, the My Little Pony tabletop game. So... Those people over there made this kind of tie-in book to the movie. So if you guys do play this, you get more content like new location, non, uh, new non-pony characters, expanded rules, new adventures, new character and creatures. So um, the highlights here that I want to highlight here is like you get cat creatures, uh, swashbuckling pirates pirate parrots or birds I, I don't know you, you probably can create something more to your liking like hawks or whatever and you can have also the brave and honorable hippogriffs slash sea ponies i think and also sheward and intelligent lizard folks so if you want to play as the skinnies you are able to do so so yay more new characters in all honesty i think this game is introducing the new furry thing to the tabletop game thing so probably you can take the engine and put it in some other games so yay or maybe we could just play as the pony folks but uh, we got new NPCs because from the looks of it it's actually NPCs not uh... playable characters but oh but all in all, it's gonna be fun from the looks of it because let's say we can fill in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gap. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, you can create anything you want. Like if you got the creativity and you have the well imagination, you can just do anything. Like yeah, set your mind free and do whatever you want. So yeah, this is the book. Like I'm not sure when it's going to come out. Uh, does it say when? I'm looking at it and. Doesn't say anything yet. Well, so they're far. doing it so soon, soonish. What do you think, man? Like you've bought the books, and I think you also bought the second expansion. Yeah, I bought the Curse of the Statues also, and well, the thing is that I have no one to play with. <laughs> so, uh, well, there's, there's someday, that. someday, at least you'll get a collection. So, you're gonna buy this one? I am not sure because I'm still not even getting the, un- <laughs> the underdog right. yet. I don't know. I mean. Uh, like the um, My Little Pony movie book, like the art book for the movie came out during the same time or earlier, I don't remember. But it's out and that had some things in the book showing the characters, how different they are from the TV show through the movie. Also, um, character developments like Tempest and so on. And those were interesting, but they didn't really tell anything about the world. Am I wrong? What? I'm wrong? Yep. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It, it just gives a brief description of everything, so it's not full. But with this one, it adds in, well, backstories, I think, for certain locations, especially that town where the lizard folks live. So it'll be interesting. Like, I... Do want to get this book just because of the location and what they 
have to offer. But eh, if I don't get it, I'm not gonna cry over it. I have checked the date. It says、uh, it's you can pre-order now, but it will ship at the end of 2017. Well, technically, with the episode over, with the movie out, we got nothing. Like we got, we seriously got nothing now. But it's not really completely nothing. We're gonna be getting the Equestria Girls digital series. Yeah, it's gonna start on November seventeen. So here's the thing: there's forty five episodes of this awesome series, so that's good. But it's not gonna be a full twenty two minute episode. So yeah, and well, that's. Well, kind of sad, but still, it will be interesting. I I wonder how they're going to post this one up. So you have forty five episodes within what? Let's just say the shortest is two minutes and the longest is five, maybe ten, probably. Possibly. And these are all stories from the girls from the Cantalot High. So yay with their new outfits and whatnot. Yay! And there's a story trailer out on the YouTube's. So go check it out because it's really interesting. There's a lot of things that I don't even know. Like I think、uh, Saitwa is gonna date Timber, so that's interesting. <laughs> You're not interested, are you? <laughs> I have no. I don't really watch the Crusher Girl series. Well, I could、oh, just、yeah. watch for fun. Like、uh, I don't know. I mean, this thing that they have here. It's interesting because it follows the same plan like they did with the shorts that came out recently, so we'll have to see how it goes. Like I do want this to go on successfully and whatnot, and I do want to see how the story goes. Maybe they're introduced some new things and whatnot, but yeah, I'm not gonna rush it. Like if it comes out, it comes out. And last but not least, science. Do you like the science? Yes, I do. Science is fun, so why not help the people at Brony Studies? And if you got no idea who they are, they're a bunch of well, quote unquote, scientists who take surveys and do what you call this, well, surveys on the Brony fandom about what we like and so on. Like I think the first year Brony Studies was about well, generic as you can be, asking about. How did you know the show? When did you start and whatnot? And I think from Favorite Ponies too. And as time goes on, they change to more serious, to more interesting questions. Have you taken the survey? No, but I'm doing it now. Does that count? Oh, it's gonna take a while. Quite a short one. It's <laughs> about ten questions. <laughs> ten questions for the first page. Really? Yes, I've I've took it. Like there's. Um, a few page up to quote unquote nineteen questions,、Ooh. and they ask from、uh, your age, name, and also how long have you been in a fandom and so on. It's a brony study, like they want to study the consensus, like it's a pie chart or something. Like they don't really collect the personal information. Like you can opt out from giving your name and age, and so on.、Uh-huh. You can just ans- answer the most. Basic questions like,、um, what do you think of the bronies thing and whatnot? Like, it's there, it's free. Go take it if you want to. Well, spend some time and stuff. Like, it's fun, it's fun. And yeah, that's about it for well today. So let's head into the next topic. And next topic is what have we been doing with our week? So Star, <laughs> what about you, man? Uh, well, I was talking about it just now, and well, like I said, it was. A quite a very very slow week after since the movie came out, and all in all, I have nothing much to say other than just like chilling and all this and whatnot, just re- reading up on、uh, some tech news and stuff. But seems like tech m- is also not much also. Yeah, tech news. like tech news seems to be slowing down a bit. Like I am not hundred percent sure. I'm not into the tech news that much. I only see. What I'm shown on the internet and whatnot, yeah. So I don't know much. So nothing more than that, like besides watching the movie. But I did read the article regarding about the fact that oh wait,、uh, did you remember about the last time there was this one guy who actually made an iPhone? Oh yeah. The in China, and he came back with another video and how he did、uh, installing the headphone jack into iPhone Seven. 
Yeah, I remember that. Like, um, that guy has only two videos on his channel. One is about making his own iPhone, and the second was putting a headphone jack into the iPhone 7. Yeah. Is there a new one? Nope. That's ah. the only one. So you watched that, what, half an hour long video? Yeah, I actually watched it, the whole thing. And it was like, oh, it's quite interesting. Yeah, like, you learn a lot about how things are made. And I think he learned some of the tool of the trade too, from how certain thing works and stuff, and also buying a lot of hardware. Like, it's not just about the device itself is like creating the PCB and also wiring it and also putting it into the phone making it work and whatnot. Long, long story short is the R&D but the thing is that it's a bit very very janky is the fact that you actually have to implement the what do you call it the lightning to the headphone adapter uh, thing yeah have, have an adapter then it works or else it's not gonna work yeah and that's interesting like he managed to do it and let's just say this for any casuals who want to do it, I say the difficulty out of 10 would be a 20. Yep. It's well, he did say that uh, it's not for those who are beginners, actually. Yeah, true, that, but still, difficulty levels at 20, even if you do have all the device, you have to open up your phone, put space, uh, dremel a hole in the casing and whatnot, like, it's not easy. No, it's ridiculous. Then again, I have, he did say a good thing though. It's the fact that why the heck do we even need a barometric sensor? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's like when you just look at it, it was like, you know, this thing is pretty useless. <laughs> I, I don't know because I haven't gone into, um, researching what does it do and stuff. So I can't really say anything about it. Uh, yep. Oh well. So that's been your week. So that's good. And as for me, my week's been pretty slow. Uh, let's see. Besides the movies, uh, well, standard game of Overwatch, and I've been replaying Diablo Three again. <laughs> oh, nice. I know Diablo Three seems to be those just point and click and forget about things like just hunt for loot and just you know is that fun kind of game. You played Diablo 3 before? Yeah, I played Diablo 3. Yeah, and you know what I mean, right? When you just point, click, and just have fun. Yep. Well, the thing is that my PS4 uh, is much further than my PC. <laughs> oh, you play on the PS4? Okay. I, I, I got both PS4 and PC version. <laughs> alright, alright. Uh, as for me, I play on the PC because when I, I bought it when the game first came out. So, yeah, that that's me. <laughs> but, yeah, um, what can I say? The game is fun. Like, I haven't got the full version of it, but from what I'm playing right now, it seems that it's enough. I really, really enjoy it. I, well, for my case, I do been playing a bit of Cooks of Delicious, too. I remember you showing me some YouTube link, about, just telling me about it. I remember you telling me about it, and... Uh, it looks fun. Like, it's almost like Dino Dash. Much more hellish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember that one too. Uh, but still, are you having fun with it? Let's just say that, like, imagine cooking everything in the people, the patience of the people is like 20 seconds long. <laughs> imagine uh, dealing like with nine serving table. And, um, that's not fun. Uh, alright, alright. Uh. And also something else, um, well, technically this carries over for the past two weeks. And I've been reading a fanfic called, um, Five Score Divided by Four by Twisted Spectrum on Filmfic. And this is a story about, well, let me just open up the summarized thing that he wrote down. Even though My Little Pony, Friendship with Magic ended five years ago, my friend and I still love the show. Stories, merch, fan art, I love it all. Things start to get a weird, I'm sorry, things started to get a, get a weird, hmm, okay, that's, doesn't sound right. Anyway, a weird thought when I found myself with a cutie mark appearing on my leg. Humans aren't supposed to get cutie marks. So, where the heck did this came from? And what's going on with my hair? It's a really fun read if you're 
interested in fan fiction and I think this one was about let me see total words is about 295,998 words with apparently let's see 38 chapters so yeah it's a long read but it's really really fun I would highly recommend people checking this out because it's kind of an AU alternate universe kind of deal but it's it's really fun it is really fun and that's it for me so sorry got anything to add nope I think that's all you think that's all alrighty then so anyway if you guys at home have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at mbs show and my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo Star, where can the good people find you? Uh, people can find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter, which is also AngelicorXX. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us live on PonyBeLive.com. I don't think it's live, but still, you can catch us on PonyBeLive.com. Anyway, links are in the show notes. Also, please do subscribe to our newest endeavor, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guest of the Week, if we do have a guest, review the My Little Pony episodes, comics, and movies. That includes Equestria Girls and also the 2017 movie. And who knows, maybe one day, the original 70s movie? I think, probably, they met, <laughs> that may be in the works. And also some other shows, like, well, let's see, what other shows have we talked about that was not pony related? Well, I know that we did Kung Pao into the fist, that was really entertaining, like, uh, if somebody quotes that to me, I'll laugh. And also I think we did the DuckTales comic, slash Darkwing Duck, that was fun too. And other than that, well, Things are up in the air, like we got no idea what we're going to do. Next week is Halloween, so who knows? We might have some special coming out. Ooh, check out for that. But anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Over there, with every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, the edited contents, and exclusive. Like seriously, that is an exclusive with me, Joey the Dragon and some of my friends talking about the movie. And that's exclusively for people who are on Patreon. I don't think that's going to be coming out on the YouTube anytime soon. So go ahead and support us over there. The lowest is a dollar. The highest is what? Five, I think. Was it ten? I don't remember. But it's there if you want to support. Please do. And um, if you do support the show, you'll get a thank you. And... Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Andrecatoria, Starstream, and also myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support you've been giving me. And I really thank you for that. And anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And this is Starstream. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya! See ya! See ya.